regardless of who the third party is, um, and even that that phrasing, right, third party, um, that's largely who's directing the data. That's largely who the data is for, is for the third party. Uh, so that old philosophical question, who benefits? Uh, it's it's the third party. And so in our cases, it's uh, accrediting agencies. Yeah. Um, right. And so, you know, who who would know better about studying abroad than the student studying abroad? <laughs> so what is the purpose of the collective? data right and so the purpose is clearly not to benefit the students that that is not why data is collected and i'm going to i'm going to double down uh even though those participants have left uh you know having a legal background right i i when i hear an institution uh say something like um we're protecting the students right we're mm -hmm. protecting the identity of the students well uh, legally speaking, that is false, right? What, what they're protecting themselves from is the potential, the potentiality of liability. And the data is there. It, it's not a mystery to them uh, who the citizens are and who the non-residents are. They know how to collect it in their spreadsheets as far as getting the tuition from the students. Uh, they know how to get it for charging different fees for different types of students. And so again, the third party is really the one that's structuring the entire data collection process. I think what, what we're trying to say is that because we're essentially middle people, uh, and I think Max is in that same position, uh, we have the opportunity to go against the grain of what that story about data is. And we can start trying to represent data from a bottom up uh, point of view as opposed from that top down point of view. And, you know, one of the principles of uh, Gestalt psychology is that this kind of conversation and this kind of uh, awareness of bringing those two things into conversation uh, will lead to a better process. And that'll lead to, and I think what we're trying to say is that by bringing these processes together, and you see three different, very different examples in the report, uh, both in how we collected the data and how we're presenting it, that should give you a richer pool of data. You should know more uh, about the situation by doing that. Uh, unfortunately, that top-down uh, approach tends to have really meaningless quantitative data. Quantitative data can be meaningful, uh, but it does not tend to be that way. And unfortunately, it feeds a lot into that deficit-minded mentality where they say, well, this number of students isn't doing well. Uh, and this is the problem is because of the way they're collecting the data. They're the ones who get to define all the terms uh, and they're really the ones who get to frame the questions. I mean, the study abroad question is really interesting to me because again, you know, if you're thinking about, if you wanted to collect data about what do students need, that process would be very different than what do my donors need to operate this program? Those are two very different, you know, styles of questions altogether.